you don't believe in past lives, you gotta listen to this. Even if you do believe them, you gotta listen to this. So this kid right here, his name is Ryan Hammond, and he holds the world record for the most facts known about a past life. And these are gonna blow your mind. So when Ryan was about four years old, he started having nightmares, and he was recalling memories about being a Hollywood actor. Now this kid was born in Oklahoma. He was saying things like he was concerned about his adopted son and that he was an actor in Hollywood. He had this fascination with sunglasses. So his mom goes to the library and like really investigates all this stuff and finds this guy's picture. It was a book about movies from the 1930s and she actually finds this one and her son points at this guy and says, that's me. And he identified a bunch of other people. It was like a scene from a movie. And this guy there was no information on. He was not even listed on the caption of the picture so mom had to do more digging. And she found out that his name was Marty Martin and that he indeed had adopted sons and had a fascination with sunglasses and that he was a Hollywood actor. This kid said about 55 things that were confirmed true by his family, by Marty Martin's family. It's stuff you wouldn't be able to look up or know. He knew that Marty had bought his daughter a dog and that she didn't like the dog. How would he know that? It was all true. The daughter confirmed it. The craziest thing that he said was this. He said that Marty had died when he was six. Well, everyone was like, no, actually, gotcha. He died at 59. Not true. Because they looked up birth records and he was going by being 59, but he was actually 61 when he died. My podcast episode this week, I deep dive into all this. Shalom. Call Lamla Yahweh. Ahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Rukakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of his son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders. And to the apostles and great millstone. <clears throat> Coming back at you with another lesson. This is one of my favorite topics. I love the topic of reincarnation because quite often we feel we can commit a crime and then supposedly pass away in our sleep in peace, not knowing or realizing that we return back to the earth in the third and fourth generation. And this is one, one of the reasons why many people have just become atheists because we're taught God loves everybody. He's all love. Not so. Let's go here. <clears throat> so we're going to go to the book of Isaiah chapter 45. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah chapter 45. Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. So if we commit a crime, if we don't pay for it, on this side, then our spirit is regenerated back onto the earth to pay for what we did in our former life. <clears throat> Let's go here to the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 20. He that is our God is the God of salvation. And unto the Most High, the Lord, belong the issues from death. So the universe is always being managed by the Most High to balance out equity, justice, through judgments. So the, the judgments on the earth <clears throat> helps to balance out what we know as mankind. So if we do wickedness or if we do dirt, we get dirt. Let's go to Zephaniah 3, 
Verse 5. The Lord, the just Lord, is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning doth he bring his judgment to light. He fell not. But the unjust knoweth no shame. So the wicked just think they can continue to do wickedness and not have to pay for their crimes. Everything we do in this life has a price tag. And we either pay for it on this end or the latter end. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not are right. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Notice it said that the ungodly have said this, reasoning with themselves, but not are right. So that means that the wicked do not understand judgment. <clears throat> Let's read it again. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. And in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. So they don't understand the cycle of life or the circle of life. They don't understand judgment. So they continue to do wickedness because judgment is not brought on an evil man in the time that they're anticipating it to. Let's go to Proverbs 28. The book of Proverbs chapter 28. Verse five, evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. So the wicked are in rulership, pursuant to Job 9 and 24. So they just keep continuing to compound interest on top of unpaid debts. So they're going to go into an eternal slavery until they literally become extinct. Obadiah verse 18. You see? <clears throat> so they have unpaid invoices that needs to be addressed. Unpaid debts and interests that have been compounded on top of unpaid debts to the society and to the world the world of Israel. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Proverbs 28, verse 5. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Let's jump up to verse 4. Proverbs 28 and 4. They that forsake the law praise the wicked but such as keep the law contend with them. So this is the battle between good and evil. You have righteous spirits, right hand side, battling against left hand or sinister side spirits on the earth. This is the delicate balance between good and evil. Let's go back. So we're going to go from there. So this actor, I never heard of him. Named Marty. Let's go back to him. His family. It's stuff you sons and had a family information on. He was. Anyway, I pulled him up. Right here. And lo and behold, Marty Martin. When you subtract. Let's do the math. He was born in 1903. And he died in 1964. So when you do the math, that's 59 years. Marty Martin 
It's a little bit about him right here. Then there's the article about the boy that remembers his past life as a Hollywood agent. We'll just click on it. We've already seen the video. So we know what he says has been verified, which further proves reincarnation. So he died 59 years ago. Let's look up this. It says, I just did a simple search. How many years are in one generation? It can be, it can be described as the average period generally considered to be approximately 20 to 30 years. See? So he died approximately 60 years ago, which is he came back in the third generation. See? <clears throat> oh, here. It's all in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. Everything that happens in life is backed up by the scriptures. <clears throat> Let's read this one. Exodus 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for the Lord thy God is a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So these children are our great, 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 or great, 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 great grandparents that come back. So we become as a child again in our old age, preparing for that re-entry back into the earth as a child. There's a reason a baby is crying, screaming to the top of their lungs, coming back into this world. Exodus 20 and 5, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the Israelites were given the covenant, the contract. That's why the Israelites are suffering the brunt of the burden of the curses for breaking that contract. Worshiping idols, being rebellious. Exodus 34, verse 7. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So notice will by no means acquit them or acquit the iniquity. Let's read it again. Keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So if we're guilty of committing a sin, it does not go unpaid for. Now, in the last days, which we're in, the elect are going to be pardoned and delivered and receive salvation the elect of the house of Israel that have been here many iterations. A just man falleth seven times. So that is a perfect iteration or cycle of completion. Numbers 14 and 18. The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So we did the math here. This man died 
1964. Where is it at? Let's go back. Yeah, okay, let's click on it. The hell? Um, Marty Martin. Well, we know he died in 1964. Now it's pulling up. Somehow I lost the uh, the link. All right. So we'll go back. Let's get rid of the closeout. Deuteronomy 5 and 9. So he came back approximately 60 years after his death, which puts him in the third generation. So when we come back, it's either for punishment or reward. So our spirits are regen. Re means to return or back again. And then gen means genes. The, the body. Just like if you say reincarnation, re means return, in, insert, and then carne means body. Deuteronomy 5 and 9. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right now, the earth's population is about 8 billion people. So the harvest is ripe for judgment. That's why we're entering into Hadamagadwan, Armageddon, which means mountain of troops. So we're entering into the second death, which is the great major judgment by fire. The earth is going to be flooded by fire in various pockets of the earth. But the daughter of Babylon, which is America, will receive the brunt of that devastation and will never be inhabited again, according to the scriptures. So if we love him, we keep his commandments. So visiting the iniquity of them to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the opposite of hating him is being obedient. That's love, obedient to his will. The John 14. And a part of that obedience to our men is to teach. John 14, verse 14. Uh, I'm going to go. Yeah, this is right. John 14 and 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So, well, that's why we, when we read visiting the iniquity unto the fathers upon their children of them that hate me. So rebelling against the contract that was made with the heavenly father. And it was only made with the children of Israel in the wilderness under Moses. So we're in these times where it's high time to repent, to return back to the word of promise, to the covenant, and to be found worthy through the faith of the blood of Yahweh Shai, and to walk in his ways to the best of our ability, to avoid paying for the guiltiness of our sins by our own blood. So if we're not walking under the covering of the word, which became flesh, which means walking in his ways and suffering affliction until the time of redemption, then we have to pay with our own blood. That's the other significance of reading these scriptures. The scriptures cannot be broken. So if we're unrepentant, then that debt comes upon our flesh in this body in the third or fourth generation, which many of these souls are back on the earth today. 
hence a global population of 8 billion people. Yeah, I wanted to pull this man's... Yeah, here he is, right here. Man, I'm getting C now. Prematurely. See, born May 19th, 1903 in Philadelphia. And he died December 25th, 1964. So he was not a very well-known or popular actor. That would have made this a little suspect because it would be easier to know the ins and outs and details of a popular actor. Well, this man was more or less an extra in the movie, so to speak. Not very well known. So this is one of my favorite topics. Very exciting. But in this generation, he may have had a few more too many donuts. Okay, but back then, born in 1903, they didn't eat like that. <clears throat> but now video games, Krispy Kreme donuts, and damn Coca-Cola sodas. And that he was an actor in Hollywood. He had this fascination with sunglasses. So his mom goes to the library and like really investigates all this stuff and finds this guy's picture. It was a book about movies from the 1930s and she actually finds this one and her son points at this guy and says, that's me. And he identified a bunch of other people. It was like a scene from a movie. And this guy, there was no information on. He was not even listed on the caption of the picture, so mom had to do more digging. And she found out that his name was Marty Martin, and that he indeed had adopted sons and had a fascination with sunglasses, and that he was a Hollywood actor. This kid said about 55 things that were confirmed true by his family, by Marty Martin's family. It's stuff you wouldn't be able to look up or know. He knew that Marty had bought his daughter a dog and that she didn't like the dog. How would he know that? It was all true, the daughter confirmed it. The craziest thing that he said was this. He said that Marty had died when he was six. Well, everyone was like, no, actually, gotcha, he died at 59. Not true, because they looked up birth records and he was going by being 59, but he was actually 61 when he died. So hopefully this lesson has been edifying. One of my favorite topics, Kohalayim La, Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekwakadash, Barakatam. See you on the next lesson, Adawan Rataza, which means Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, which means rise, Israel, and the bud, the ball, destruction to Babylon, Shalom, which means peace unto you, Shalom.